This video is sponsored by Fabulous, the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. On January 15th, a submarine volcano called Hunga Tonga in the Kingdom of Tonga exploded. It had been erupting for a few weeks, but after a period of relative calm, the eruption became more and more violent over a couple of days and eventually produced a colossal explosion. The images of the eruption from space are just shocking. This thing was enormous. It basically deleted the central part of the volcano that stuck above the water, and yet this explosion was only half the story, and it caused a cascade of events around the world. And possibly was the very first time we've ever observed a particular atmospheric phenomenon. On the local scale, collisions between the huge quantity of ash that was injected into the atmosphere led to a buildup and discharge of electric charge, and a frankly mind-blowing display of volcanic lightning. You can clearly see where the plume of ash is spread by the number of lightning strikes in satellite imagery. By one count, in three hours, the eruption produced 400,000 lightning strikes. But far more dangerous than the lightning was the tsunami the eruption caused. Now, a tsunami is a very specific kind of wave. They are always caused by a mass displacement of water, typically by some big event like an undersea earthquake or a volcanic eruption. Remember that, it becomes important. Because this eruption displaced a huge amount of water, maybe a few hundred million tons, a tsunami was triggered and rapidly spread out through the Pacific. Now, the first to be hit was the Kingdom of Tonga, whose capital Nuku Alaifa is just 40 miles away from the volcano. You can see the moment the tsunami hits Tonga as internet traffic with the country just falls off a cliff. And as of the time of recording, communication with the country is still extremely sporadic because the one undersea internet cable to the country has been severed, though reports seem to indicate that the main island has been badly hit, though there are no reports of mass casualties. But having said that, we still haven't heard from any of the outer islands. The wave then spread out across the Pacific Ocean, leading to tsunami warnings in other island nations and eventually Japan. Even 8,000 kilometers away, the tsunami was still a metre high, though fortunately doesn't seem to have caused any damage here. This much you've probably heard elsewhere, but this video isn't really about the eruption or the tsunami. I want to talk briefly about the atmospheric impact of the eruption, which is global, twofold, and maybe unprecedented. Firstly, like all volcanic eruptions, the events of January 15th injected a large amount of sulfur dioxide, or SO2, into the atmosphere. And that's significant because SO2 reacts with water vapour in the atmosphere to form tiny droplets of sulfuric acid, which can stick around for a very long time, especially if they reach the stratosphere. But why is that important? Well, those tiny droplets are very reflective, and in the aftermath of large volcanic eruptions, the Earth's atmosphere can become so reflective to incoming solar radiation that it noticeably cools the Earth down. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, 17 million tonnes of SO2 was injected into the atmosphere, causing a global cooling of around half a degree Celsius in the year or two after the eruption. So a reasonable question to ask this time round is, will this eruption result in some global cooling? Will it buy us some time in the fight against climate change? And the answer is, unfortunately, probably not. It's still early days, but initial estimates based on satellite data indicate that the Tongan eruption injected maybe 0.4 million tonnes of SO2 into the atmosphere, so 40 times less than Pinatubo, and not enough to have a significant impact on the climate. But the eruption did have another global atmospheric impact, which may be a first since observations began. Recall how the displacement of water by the eruption led to a tsunami in the ocean. Well, the eruption also displaced a lot of material and put it into the atmosphere. And doing that displaced a lot of air. The displaced air bunched up with surrounding air to create what we call an overpressure, that then radiated out as a wave. You can see it really clearly in these satellite images. This overpressure wave was so big and travelled so far that meteorological stations have been picking up its signal all over the Pacific, across the United States, 
And even here in the UK, 16,000 kilometers away. But remember, because the atmosphere is just a fluid that doesn't have any borders to it, any boundaries, that overpressure wave can just keep propagating around the world. Some weather stations have actually picked up the overpressure wave going overhead, and then about 36 hours later, picked it up again after the wave had traveled around the world, bounced back from its antipode, and came back overhead. But that's not the most amazing, unprecedented thing about this eruption. Because that overpressure wave was so powerful, it seems to have produced a meteor tsunami. Most waves are created by the action of the atmosphere blowing over the ocean. You have two fluids, one air, one water, traveling at two different speeds. The boundary between those two fluids naturally forms into waves. By contrast, a meteor tsunami is caused by a sharp pressure gradient, or velocity gradient, in the atmospheric layer. So there being this really big contrast between lots of air, and then not very much air, over a relatively short span. And that gradient forces a wave to appear on the ocean below. Meteor tsunamis are kind of common, they've been observed all over the world, and can be really quite big and destructive. For example, 3 meter meteor tsunamis have been observed on the Florida coast, and a 6 meter meteor tsunami on the Croatian coast. The overpressure wave from the Tongan eruption was so powerful that it seems to have caused a meteor tsunami. Something that, as far as I can tell, has never happened before on the instrumental record. And that's kind of extraordinary. A tsunami, a meteor tsunami, caused not by the displacement of water, but by the displacement of air by a volcanic eruption. And the crazy thing here is that because this overpressure wave washed over the whole planet, the meteor tsunami wasn't just limited to the Pacific. A small meteor tsunami was measured in the Caribbean, in an entirely different ocean basin. Our planet's atmosphere and oceans are really just enormous examples of fluid flow. And just like any two fluids, they can interact to produce amazing results. Ocean atmosphere dynamics are absolutely fascinating to me, and this eruption provided a really clear window into how planetary scale fluids can interact. A volcanic eruption in the South Pacific caused an atmospheric wave that traveled 12,000 kilometers to the Caribbean where it initiated an ocean wave. And we were able to measure all of that. Now, if you don't think that's amazing, I don't know what to tell you. This eruption and tsunami, however, have been devastating to Pacific communities such as Tonga, and as of the time of recording, communications are still really sparse. Now, this video was sponsored by Fabulous, and I'm going to be donating that entire sponsorship fee to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, who are working to help those affected by the disaster. Please do stick around for a minute to find out where that money has come from, though, because Fabulous may very well be able to help you, too. That's because Fabulous is an app developed by a team originally at Duke University's Behavioral Economics Lab designed to help you build healthy daily habits. The app tailors your experience to what you want to accomplish using it. So do you want to use it to improve your mental health or your physical health or your productivity or your mindfulness? And then using behavioral science, it breaks down the habits that you want to achieve into really small tasks that are really easy to do day by day and keeps track of your progress. In my particular case, I wanted to focus on productivity and work-life balance. My first step was drinking water before I did anything else in the morning, a habit that has successfully stuck. After that, I added playing the piano to my morning routine, a few things during the workday, and a bedtime routine, including deliberately putting my phone to one side before bed. The app is personalized by you from the moment you open it for the first time, though if you prefer, you can take some pre-made journeys picked out for you. Believe me, doing this stuff on your own is hard, and Fabulous basically acts like having a tiny hype man in your pocket, just 
gently encouraging you a couple of times a day to be the best version of yourself and to take care of yourself. Using it for the past week has been a really positive experience for me that I can't really put into words, but it's made me analyze my habits and I've definitely seen some positive changes from it already. I'm gonna keep using it. So if that all sounds good, start building your ideal daily routines with Fabulous. The first 100 people to go to the link in the description will get 25% off their subscription. And I'd encourage you to give it a go. Thanks again to Fabulous for supporting this video and for allowing me to support the disaster relief efforts in Tonga and the Pacific. Thank you so much for watching the video. I've had some really split feelings on this topic because on the one hand, the science here is really interesting and potentially a world first and incredibly beautiful. But on the other hand, this is a real potential humanitarian disaster that we just don't know enough about yet. So I hope with this video, I've raised some awareness of the science, but also of the situation in the Pacific. So please do check out Fabulous down there in the description, but also I'll leave a link to the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies if you'd like to support the relief Efforts, then please do make a donation there. If you enjoyed the video, please do pop it a like and maybe share it with people that you think might also find it interesting. If you'd like to watch some more stuff on YouTube next, then here's some recommendations for you. And that just leaves me to say thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.